Hi, and thank you for choosing to watch this video message. My name's Richard Pitchley, and I'm the pastor at Millpool Hill Church in Birmingham. Today, we're starting our Essential Jesus series of Bible teaching, Essential Jesus. Essential means necessary. It means defining, fundamental, perfect, even required in your diet. Essential Jesus means that we really do need the Son of God in our lives. Why? Because Jesus is necessary for life. Because without him, well, all we have is just a mere existence. Jesus can give us that defining moment when we can be born again and start a brand new wonderful life in a right relationship with God. Jesus is fundamental for us because he's the one that can give us a meaningful life. He's the one that can cause us to be fruitful. After all, he said, I am the true vine. And if we abide in him, we can have a fruitful, wonderful, supernatural life. Jesus is perfect and he's the one who can make us clean. He can pardon us for our many sins and clean our lives up from the inside out and change us from one degree of glory to the next. Jesus is the bread of life. He is required in our daily diet for our soul. He is the one that nourishes our soul life. Essential Jesus. What you really need to know about Jesus can be summed up in these few words. Jesus is eternal. Jesus came to us. Jesus lived a perfect life and then he died on the cross for our sin. Jesus rose again on the third day from the dead and he ascended back into heaven. Jesus offers you and me eternal life. He gives forgiveness and friendship. Jesus will come back again. Jesus is forever. Eternity without Jesus is hell. So today in a essential Jesus, we're going to be looking at Jesus, the promise keeper. I wonder how many times in life have you trusted somebody to do something for you. People have promised you, I'll do this for you. I'll be there for you. I'll take care of that. And you've listened to their promises and been assured of what they're saying is true. And then you've been disappointed because they've let you down. Probably that's happened to all of us, maybe too many times. And it is disappointing and it is upsetting when people do that. In contrast, it's great, isn't it? When somebody says, leave it to me, I'll do that. And they actually follow through on their words and they do what they say they're going to do. I love the story of Dr. David Livingston when he was out in the heart of Africa and as a missionary doctor, he was serving the Lord out there. In fact, he was the only at that time white man in the heart of Africa and he was doing what he believed God called him to do, to help humanity and to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was on his own and he was camped by a river. And then late one night, he heard the jungle drums beating. He knew that it was going to be some kind of tribal warfare. And he realised that he was probably going to be caught up in the middle of all that. That there would be much bloodshed there would be a massacre and naturally speaking he was frightened he began to think to himself I need to escape from this camp I need to get out of this place but before he did that he chose to open his bible and he opened up his bible and read Matthew chapter 28 and at the end of Matthew chapter 28 there's the great commission of the Lord Jesus where Jesus tells us to go and to make disciples of all men in all the world and then Jesus said, lo, I will be with you always, even unto the end. And when Livingstone read those words, I will be with you, although he could hear the jungle drums beating in the background, he put down his Bible and he said to himself, I have the word 
of a gentleman. He believed that Jesus had made a promise that he would never leave Dr. David Livingstone. And so Livingstone knew that although he might be caught up in a terrible jungle tribal warfare, it wouldn't matter because Christ was always with him. And I want to say to you today, at the beginning of a brand new year, we have many wonderful promises from the Lord Jesus Christ. We have many wonderful things that we can depend upon him for. And sincerely, I would say to you, we have the words of a gentleman. Back in 1984, at 9pm on the 19th of December, I opened up my heart to the Lord Jesus for the first time. I got on my knees and I said sorry for my sins and they were many. I asked the Lord Jesus to be my saviour. I asked him to be the Lord of my life and he came into my life. He forgave me. He gave me a miracle of a brand new start in life. I was literally born again and from that time on I can honestly say to you that the Lord Jesus has never ever let me down. He's always been there. He's always fulfilled his word concerning me. His promises are sure and you can totally depend upon him. You see, he is the promise keeper. He is the one who gives us his word. And in Christ, we have the word of a gentleman. Jesus said, I will give you rest. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus wants to give you true rest. We live in a busy, fast-paced rat race of a life. All the time, it's busy, busy, busy. We live in the constant stream of news and media going on all the time. There's the constant 24-hour day news, social media just constantly pumping out all the time. And the news and social media, it never takes a break to come up for air. It's constant. It's relentless all the time. And if we're not careful, we get caught in the flow of that. And, and we feel like we are in the rat race of life. We're desperate to breathe air. We're desperate for a break. And somehow the current of all this just keeps relentlessly taking us along. It just it beats the air out of us and it makes us feel tired in our soul and spirit. We have more computers and automation today than any other generation. And yet we have more anxiety and stress levels like never before. Life in the fast lane leaves us feeling strained, stretched and starved of rest for our soul. And in the midst of all this, we need to understand that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He's the one that in his earthly ministry stood up in a boat and looked at the wind and the waves, a mighty storm, and rebuked the storm and told it to be quiet and still. And instantly, the very elements had to obey the one that created them. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He's the one who said, my peace I give unto you. And his peace is not just an absence of noise or a stillness. No, his peace is what we call shalom peace. Shalom is God's peace. It's wholeness and a true rest for our soul. And in a world of busyness, when everything is rushing around us, we can be still and know that God is God. And we can know his peace, his shalom. Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will. That's his promise. I will give you rest. If you want rest for your soul, then I suggest to you today, Go to Jesus. Give him your worries. 
receive his peace. Jesus is the promise keeper. Not only does he promise us rest and peace, but he says, I will never drive you away. He is the one that promises us a sense of acceptance and belonging. In John chapter 6, Jesus said, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. Jesus will never reject you, whoever you might be. Can you remember that feeling when you were at school many years ago? We were in the gym. You can remember probably being in the gym or on the soccer field or on the hockey field and the PE teacher or the teacher would pick two captains and the captains would stand at the front and then one by one they would select people they wanted on their team. And I don't know about you, but it always felt the same. I was always left to last, like a dented tin on a supermarket shelf that nobody wants. It hurt being picked last all the time. Do you remember that time when your face just didn't fit? Maybe you went to a party. Maybe you went into a room and nobody came over to you to talk to you. And you felt like you were just isolated and on your own. You weren't accepted by everybody else. Do you remember that feeling when your very parents were so busy all the time, they just didn't have time for you? Oh, that really hurts also. Maybe you've been forsaken by others. Maybe you've been dumped by your girlfriend or dumped by your boyfriend. The pain of being dumped is really hard to take as well. You see, we all need to be loved. We all need to feel that we matter. We need to feel that we can be included. We need to feel a, a sense of belonging and, and acceptance. We all, we all feel that we need this in our lives and it's a very real feeling in our hearts. And when we're not accepted, when we feel we can't belong, when we feel unloved, and I've been there, it's a terrible, wretched, cold feeling on the inside. There's a, a darkness in your heart, there's an emptiness that just cannot be kind of healed by anything. It's so painful. Well, Jesus says to you, and he says to me, that he will include us. He won't reject us. He loves us. He wants to bring us into his family. He wants to bring us close to himself. And when I first came to Jesus many, many years ago, my life was a real mess. And yet he still welcomed me. You see, Jesus said, all that the Father gives to me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. That's his promise. He won't drive you or me away. I've read the Bible many times and uh, I'm always heartened and gladdened by the fact that when I read the pages of the gospel and the account of the life of Christ, I read about a multitude of people that were hungry for God. I read about a whole load of people that desperately wanted to touch Jesus. I read about people who were empty, people who were looking and searching in life for something that would satisfy their souls. And then they knew that Jesus was the answer. And yet their lives were such a mess, but they still came to Jesus. The untouchable, the man with leprosy, the immoral, the, the, the lady that was a prostitute, the antisocial, the guy called Zacchaeus who cheated on everybody, the criminal who was the dying thief next to Jesus on the cross, the uncontrollable, the man whose life was taken over by evil demon spirits, the, the lady whose life seemed impossible because she had an issue of blood that just wouldn't dry up and she was dying. All these people had such issues. Their lives looked such a mess. And yet they came to Christ. And just as Jesus said, all that the Father has given me, all that come to me, I will never drive away. These people found in Christ love, acceptance and a welcome, just as I did. And I promise you today, even though you might look at your life and think, wow, it's such a mess compared to everybody else. 
I tell you, Jesus welcomes you. I remember reading about a, a man who was a preacher who went to a great big um, Christian college some time ago in America. And he preached a message in the, the big hall and hundreds and hundreds of students were there along with the lecturers and teachers and members of the faculty and staff. And um, at the end of his message, the preacher gave an appeal for those that would come and give their lives to the cause of Christ. Come and open your heart up to Christ. Receive him as saviour. Make him the Lord of your life. And as he gave that appeal, young men and women began to stream down the auditorium to the front to give themselves, as it were, to God Almighty. Some for the first time, some rededicating their lives. And, and as the young people were coming forward, young men who were muscular and great at sports and beautiful young ladies, as they all came forward to receive Christ and to make him the Lord of their lives. The preacher noticed that as the front was filled up and uh, the queue of people had kind of died down, there was a, a young man shuffling on his knees to the front and he looked at this young man and he thought this person is really struggling to get forward and he looked at the college president who was standing next to him on the platform and the president said don't worry about this young man he's hopelessly crippled and this is how he gets around shuffling on his hands and knees that's the only way he can move around and the preacher waited until this young man shuffled his way forward uh, and, and literally forced his way to the front by the platform. And, and then the young man looked up at the preacher and he said, sir, he said, there's all these people here. They're, they're athletes and beautiful young ladies and they're healthy and they've got so much to give to God and to give to the purpose of Christ. But he said, do you think God would accept me? And the preacher looked at the young man with tears in his eyes and he said, young man, he said, Jesus has been waiting, waiting all this time just for you. And maybe right now you feel like your life is a mess. Maybe you feel like you've been crippled by some addiction. Maybe you feel like your life has been broken by some heartache and some hurtful experience. And you feel totally broken and a mess at the beginning of this year. But God is waiting for you. And Jesus says, if you come, I promise you, I will not forsake you. I will not push you away. I will receive you unto myself. He's waiting for you. And so if you look for love, if you're longing for acceptance, if you're longing for love, then come to the Lord Jesus. Because I promise you, he won't push you away. If you want a sense of love and a sense of belonging, Jesus really is the answer for you at the beginning of this year. Jesus also promised that he would make us clean. In Luke chapter 5, we read, Whilst Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man and said, I am willing, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Jesus wants to make you clean. He wants to make me clean. Now leprosy back in the Bible was a terrible disease. It started as a small infection in the skin and it rapidly took over the body. It literally ate away at, at the flesh and, and it caused a painful death. Leprosy is a picture biblically of man's sin. And it's fatal consequences because sin starts small in our lives and then it just takes over and it has a fatal consequence because it separates us from God. And it causes us to be dirty and rotten on the inside and eventually it causes spiritual death. It sends us literally to hell. The good news is this. Christ loves us. Christ died for us on the cross so that we could be forgiven. Christ died so that we could be made clean from the inside out. Jesus gave his life so that we could be pardoned from the consequences of our sin. 
That's the good news of the gospel. And if you come to Jesus with a repentant heart, if you come to Jesus today with a, a desire to turn from that sin and that rebellion and that attitude that, that God doesn't matter in your life, if you turn from all that and you decide that you want a different kind of life and you're sorry for the old way of living without God, you can be forgiven and you can have a fresh start. Let's face it, we all do things that we know that are wrong from time to time. And it makes us feel guilty and dirty on the inside. And the guilt of our sin cannot be washed away by pure soap and shower gel. No, what we need is the power of Jesus to clean us from the inside out. We need his forgiveness. We need his power to give us a new start in life. And that's possible because Jesus loved us, died for us and rose again on the third day. He has the power to give you a new life. He has the power to give you a brand new clean slate. If you want forgiveness, if you want a fresh start, then Jesus is the answer. And Jesus said, I will ask the Father. John 14 verse 16, I will ask the Father and he will give you another counsellor or helper to be with you forever. Jesus was here talking about the Holy Spirit. You see, the Christian life is satisfying, it's rewarding, it's amazing, but at times it's very challenging. After all, Jesus said, if you really want to follow me, you need to die to yourself. You need to put aside your selfish agenda, all the things you want to do all the time. Put those things to one side. You need to, you need to kind of reckon that your old way of living is now dead. You need to crucify your flesh and its affections. You need to put to death that old selfish you and you need to pick up your cross and you need to follow me. Of course, Jesus wasn't saying we've got to pick up a, a physical wooden cross, but what he's saying is, is that we need to turn our backs on our old way of living. That selfish way that I used to live, that's not the way of a Christian. That's not the way of Christ. I need to die to that selfishness. And I need to live for Christ and to think of others rather than myself. That's a hard challenge for every one of us. And yet Jesus said, I will. In other words, I promise that I will pray to the Father, that he will send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of a living God. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of the Father and Jesus who comes into our lives and strengthens us and helps us. Hey, this year I need direction. I need help. I need strength. I need counsel. I need all the help that heaven can give. And Jesus has promised that he will give me that help through the power of his abiding Holy Spirit. I'm so glad that I don't have to do life alone in 2021. No, God can be with me, but not just with me, but literally in me, strengthening me by the power of his Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says it's not by our power or by our might, but by the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to teach us, to guide us and to give us power in this new year. If you want to be full of the Holy Spirit, if you want God's power in your lives, then Jesus is the answer because he's the one who promises to pray to the Father that we might have the Holy Spirit. And finally, Jesus is the one who says, I will confess you. In Matthew chapter 10, Jesus said, whoever therefore shall confess me before men, I will confess them also before my Father which is in heaven. Wow, to think that if we stand up for Christ today, he will stand up in the very glorious presence of God the Father in heaven and declare us. Heaven is a place of God's unveiled wondrous glory. It's a totally awesome place. In heaven, can you imagine it? There will be angels 
um, archangels, seraphim and cherubim and 24 elders that constantly bow the knee and worship God Almighty. Uh, and there will be a whole multitude of redeemed people praising God. The noise of heaven will be wondrous as people are praising God. And the glory and the light, uh, and, and it's just going to be beyond our human thinking, really. And yet, when I shut my eyes on this world and I open them again, it will be instantly in that glory. Because to be absent from my body is to be present with the Lord if I'm a Christian and believe in Christ. And that's my destiny. I hope it's going to be your destiny also. But can you imagine that wonderful moment when you open your eyes and you see all the angels and you see the 24 elders and you see the living beast before the throne of God and, and you see the glory of God in heaven just lighting it all up. It's going to take your breath away. And for a split second, you're going to think, I don't belong here. And then Jesus will grab your hand and with a great smile on his face, he will literally pull you into the presence of God before the throne of God and say, Father, this is Richard. This is the one I was telling you about. And you will hear the amazing voice of God echoing throughout eternity saying, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter the joy or the rest of the Lord. Wow. Jesus promises that if we live our life here in the earth, acknowledging him, serving him, loving him, worshipping him, witnessing for him, confessing him with the actions and the attitudes of our hearts and our lives and telling others about him. Jesus said, if you live that kind of life, if you're not ashamed of me in the world, I will never be ashamed of you in heaven. If you confess me now, I promise I will confess you before my Father in heaven. What a wonderful promise that is. I don't know when my entrance to heaven will be, but I'm ready for it. And I'm excited to know that it's going to be okay because Jesus will confess me before the Father. Essential Jesus, because we all need somebody that we can trust in and commit our lives to. Someone who will carry through on their promises to us. Jesus said, as the promise keeper, I will give you rest for your weary soul. Jesus said, I will never drive you away if you come to me in faith. Jesus said, I will cleanse you of your sins if you confess them and you turn from them. Jesus said, I will ask the Father to give you the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, I promise to confess you before the Father if you stand up for me now and confess me before before men. Please, in 2021, don't live your life alone. The Bible says, keep on depending on God, because in the Lord God, you have a sure thing, Isaiah 26. It's important to remember, we can't live this life by ourselves. We won't created to place our hope and our expectation all in ourselves that doesn't work we can't handle that kind of pressure but thankfully Jesus can Jesus can meet our needs he can forgive us our sins and he can exceed our wildest expectations he said I've come to give you life in all abundance Jesus is essential and he is the promise keeper I hope that this message has encouraged you and inspired you and until next time, may God bless you and may he keep you.